NBA Commissioner David Stern. This is his first network television interview during the finals. So we bring this up as we try and touch on as many substantive issues as we can in this short time available to us. We bring it up not to turn the heat on Michael Jordan, but to clarify the issue. Are you satisfied that this is not a serious concern for the NBA, the latest round of stories about his gambling? Yes, I am. But it's raised a good issue, and I think it's something that we have to be, uh, I think, very cognizant of in the course of the summer, not for Michael, but for dealing with the questions our fans have raised about our players, and we're looking into a lot of related subjects on gambling, per se. How can it not be a serious concern if the most prominent figure in the league is involved persistently in high-stakes gambling? Well, what's your debt structure, Bob? How much money do you owe? It doesn't make any difference. I don't represent the NBA. I'm a reporter. But I'm not about to. Well, well, you represent NBC, but I'm not about to go about and see how much our players owe. I don't think they should owe it to the wrong people. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and I have to know more about Mr. Eskinas, whose book you did an infomercial for some time ago. Are you planning to speak with Mr. Eskinas? Yes, we're involved in a, in a series of investigations on the subject. Speaking of books, Bob Green, a very respected reporter, wrote a book with Michael Jordan. Quoted Michael as saying, that after the uh, allegations arose concerning his gambling and checks were found in the hands of pretty clearly unsavory characters, right. Slim Buhler and others, he was called into your office. Michael characterized the two and a half hour meeting as being about a half hour worth of substance and the rest just for show, so it could look like the NBA was being tough on him, and right. he assured the league that there were no other checks out there, nothing else bouncing around. That turns out perhaps not to be true now. He assured the league that uh, he understood the gravity of, of, of the quality of his associations. Uh, we had quite a conversation on that subject. It probably didn't have to take more than five minutes, but it took considerably more than that. And we got certain assurances from him on that subject, and we'll be following up with him on that. There's a perception out there, not unanimous, but a perception that's somewhat widespread that the league is reluctant to discipline Jordan. Is that your perception? No, it's a perception that's well, out there that I, you I don't hear. deal, you know, there are too many times in the course of these finals where people have said, I don't say, but they say. He says, and there's a perception. The perception is that, that uh, this league takes care of a variety of problems, uh, and, and a good question has been raised about gambling. Uh, I have a concern, but the problem is morals have changed in the last 30 years or so. 40 states promoted. We've got casino gambling all over. And that perception that you talk about is, is fueled in part by people saying that uh, players shouldn't even frequent uh, casinos. Well, that's, that can't be. It's legal, uh, and I'm not about to uh, go rushing off to enact a series of rules. Not all high-stakes gambling is legal. That's true. So it could be a possible concern. And let me clarify here. No one wants to put excessive heat on Michael Jordan. He is a good guy as well as a great player. And most people are sympathetic to the invasion of privacy issues, the extraordinary scrutiny he's under, the fact that people can exploit his name and the names of others in similar positions. But somewhere within all this tabloid stuff, there is a legitimate issue. Yes, I agree. The legitimate issue is the association of uh, players and the and the question of who they associate with and what it does with respect to the league uh, and uh, you know what steps the league should take uh, to deal with that subject uh, I'm just a little sensitive on the subject of uh, the course of uh, perceptions I mean we try to deal very directly with a number of concerns here and we'll deal with the, the with the issue of gambling as well and you're satisfied the message has been received by Michael and others uh, I'm satisfied you know if it's a good message, whether it's with your family, your kids, whatever, you have to keep delivering it. And we, with our Players Association, will be dealing with this in the course of the summer, and I'm sure for some time to come. Our time is short here. Are any changes planned in the lottery system with Orlando winning back-to-back? -back? Which was always mathematically the same chance, but it happened to be the same team right. consecutive years. My, my, there are two things that people are talking about in, in uh, amongst uh, general managers in the league and the like. I've heard a couple of ideas. One is sort of, I think they'll call it the Orlando rule. You can't win back-to-back. -back. A little late for that. And the other is to perhaps wait the lottery uh, a bit more instead of one out of 66. Someone make it one out of 6,000, but maybe one out of 166. But but some different weighting amongst the teams would appear to be in order. Last question, real quick. You put in new rules against violence, that's a concern. Is trash talking a concern, or is that just a colorful part of the game that you shouldn't legislate against? Well, I, I, like as with everything else that we do, it's an issue, and I think it's something that we've been sensitized to. We'll see where it, where it leads. Everyone said that the trash talking was leading to violence. 
Uh, I think that that wasn't the case. I think that we've dealt with the violence issue in a, in a pretty good way, and we'll just keep an eye on both that and trash talking as next season develops. Commissioner Stern, thanks a lot, and as we say so long, across the board, congratulations for the general standing of the league. I mean, this is an all-time high. Everything this whole past year has been a dream. That's a setup. I love this game. Thank you, and it was brief, which we appreciate also. Up next, Quinn Buckner joins the proceedings as we take a look at tonight's first half after a message from Prudential.